BCIT Engineering Materials Tensile Testing of Steel. The objective of the lab is to perform tensile tests on coal finished and annealed mild steel rods. The test is done by taking a steel rod and inserting it into a pair of grips. The lower grip remains stationary while the top grip moves upward putting the sample in tension. This will cause it to elongate until it fractures. Starting materials include steel samples, a hammer, punch, punch block, and calipers. There is no difference in the outward appearance of the cold rolled and annealed mild steel samples. Here we'll be using the cold rolled steel. To start you'll add gauge marks using the punch which has two very hard steel points that will indent the softer mild steel rod. Gauge marks are made by putting a sample in the gauge block and hitting it near the center with the punch. The distance between the marks is then measured with the calipers for use later in a calculation of ductility. You'll also measure the initial diameter of the sample for a second ductility calculation. The apparatus used to test the samples is a computer controlled loading frame. To maintain a safe working environment and ensure the accuracy of your data, it's essential to follow the procedure. In the center of the frame are the grips that will hold the sample. The movement of these grips is controlled via a computer interface with the test data monitored on a readout unit. Only three buttons on the Windows graphical interface are required to run the complete test. The Home button will return the upper grips to the Start or Zero position. The New Test button starts a new data file and Start Test will initiate the tensile loading. With the sample prepared and measured, you are ready to start the test. The first step is to click on the Home button to move the top grip to its zero position. You'll hear the motor start up and then stop when the Home position is reached. The new data file is then created by clicking on the New Test button. The status unit will respond by showing the system is ready. Time to put the sample in the grips. When mounting, make sure the gauge marks are between the jaws. Starting with the bottom, Move the grip downward to tighten it on the steel rod. Do the same with the upper grip but raise it to tighten. With the sample secured, click the green arrow to start applying tension. The effects of the loading will be shown on a real-time graph. Load is on the y-axis and position on the x-axis. The full test takes a couple minutes to complete so it's shown here speed it up a bit. On the graph, you'll see where elastic deformation ends and plastic deformation begins, where maximum loading occurs, and when necking begins, ending with a final fracture. With the test complete, a copy of the test data is printed off in the graph used to determine the material's yield load and maximum load. It will be labeled and then submit it as part of the report. The sample pieces are removed from the grips, placed back in the punch block, and the new gauge length measured for the percent elongation calculation. You'll also measure the new diameter for the calculation of percent reduction of area. The procedure is repeated for the annealed steel rod. Measurements and calculations for both tests are recorded in the data table, which is included in your lab report.